Good morning everyone and thanks for joining me today. We are in beautiful Lancaster County at the Chickies Rock County Park. It started off pretty cold this morning, 16 degrees, didn't have a lot of motivation to get out there and start hiking. So I waited till after lunch, it's now about 30 degrees. And I want to talk a little bit about modifications I've made to my pack today. And maybe some of this will give you an idea of things you might want to try on your pack. We're going to talk about a shoulder uh, pocket that I have uh, to carry gear that's real handy, an umbrella, and a modification to my water system. So let's get into it. So first off, the chest harness pack. This is great for carrying things like sunglasses, uh, my mic, my phone, uh, reading glasses, things like that. The way I originally had this set up, I have a uh, a little hook at the top to connect on my strap and I had a string down at the bottom going through this little loop and I found that what was going on was that this thing was just flopping back and forth too much so what I did on the bottom is I added a piece of one inch webbing with velcro straps and that goes around holds it very securely so I'm a little, a little more happy about that Next thing we're going to talk about is a modification to the drinking system. On my Osprey pack, you've got side pockets uh, to hold your water. And your water will normally tilt at this angle. So you can reach back and grab your bottle. And uh, I was finding that a little bit inconvenient. So what I did is I purchased product that's called the source human nature converted tube and the converted tube adds uh, a variety of lids and get three different size caps to go on Nalgene and other size bottles and I routed the tube up here to the top uh, ran it through some carabiners and now it's very convenient to just take a sip. I want to show you one thing about the bottle though that you need to be aware of. So when you're going to take a drink you know you're sucking through that tube and that creates a vacuum in the bottle and uh, you won't be able to get any liquid if you draw a vacuum. So what the product has is a hole here and you've got this little uh, silicone type plug that goes in that hole and you know if you're going to store your pack um, lay it over if you don't want your water running out you're going to have to have that plug in there but in order to sip you're going to need to remove that so just keep that in mind because when i started today i had this bottle bottle in my osprey pack this way and it started to leak uh, onto my coat. So I found the best solution is just keep your bottle vertical if you can do that. And the other product I want to talk about is the Six Moon Designs Silver Shadow Ultralight Hiking Umbrella. It comes in at 8 ounces. You can get that on eBay for about 44 bucks, probably $8 shipping. And in order to attach this to my pack, what I did is created a Velcro strap, made it from one inch webbing, and I'll show you how that attaches. Okay, so you've decided you're going to get an umbrella, right? You don't want to take a poncho. You're going to probably need a raincoat anyway, but in any event, this is how we're going to attach this. Just open up the umbrella. You'll notice on the inside there is no clip of any sort. It's just kind of a, a tension opener. And what we're going to do is take our strap, chest strap, and just run the chest strap through the cord loop and secure the chest strap. Now with the piece of Velcro I have, we're going to attach that 
up here at the top around the shoulder. This is a little more difficult when you can't see what you're doing. Yeah, it's definitely harder. Try to bring it around from the back. Probably want to practice this a few times for sure. I think there's somebody that makes a clip. Now I got it stuck. Isn't this nice? I don't even have that. Did I drop it? See what's going on here. Yeah, I dropped it into my pack. Ugh. All right. So take two. The hardest part, obviously, is getting this attached to the top of my shoulder strap. So I've got this through the chest strap. I'm gonna take my piece of Velcro and get up here near the narrow part of my strap. All right, take three. Let's see if we can do this on the side with no bite tube. Put the Velcro around the back of the strap. Well, wasn't that fun watching me struggle with trying to put up my umbrella the first time? Well, it's back to the drawing board, but I'll get it right because I don't want to be fooling around trying to figure it out when it's pouring down rain. So let's get out on the trail and start hiking. Well, we're at the overlook at Chickie's Rock. Once again, two days ago, this was clear, no ice. But this ice has come down probably from Williamsport, where it's a lot colder. This isn't going to create any ice jams. I've just summited the west side of Chickie's Rock at the Route 441 cut. 441 is down below us. You can see some of the benches. There's two or three benches here before you hit the road. On the opposite side, a big patch of rocks is where I summited in the last video and walked north down along there toward Marietta. So we're going to head down to the bottom now, cross the road, and head up to the other side.
Well, I've reached the east side of 441. This is a ledge. I'm going to go down, follow that south, see if it's any kind of trail that leads me out. If not, I'll go down to 441 the way I did yesterday. Look at all that moss. Doesn't look like people walk here. Getting caught in these low, low hanging branches. This is a heck of a trail crossing. Really not too safe. Some interesting rock formations though. I think we'll just head on back the way we came and hike another day. If I fell down that hillside I wouldn't be very easy to find. So better to be safe than sorry. But it's my sense of adventure that brought me up here just to see what it's like. So thanks for following along with me. <clears throat> See you down at the bottom of the road. I did want to mention uh, last night, uh, my wife and I went in town to a talk by a gentleman who did the Appalachian Trail last year. His name is Soren West. And Soren is a local attorney and he put his business dealings in order so that at the age of 74 he started the Appalachian Trail which was a lifelong dream of his and he finished in seven months at the age of 76 and it wasn't without some trials and tribulations. He lost 30 pounds on his hike. And when he got up to the weights, he fell and he injured his right shoulder to the point where his right arm became pretty much useless. He went in town and he, he saw a doctor and the doctor wanted him to have surgery and it would have taken him off the trail for six weeks and he had never been able to get the Katahdin in that time. Uh, so he kept going and he checked the weather report and the weather wasn't looking good for Katahdin beyond about three days out. So what he did is he got up to Katahdin, skipping the white, and he summited, and then he went back to do the white. And uh, when he was in the white, looking back toward Katahdin, Katahdin was covered with snow. So if he had, if he had gotten off the trail, he would have never finished it last year. That was my second time that I got to hear him talk and I went up and talked to him a little bit after his presentation was over. And he did the whole thing with his golden retriever, which was really cool. And you can imagine, you know, some of those areas, dogs can't get up. You, you've got to haul them up yourself. And 99% uh, of the time, Sarn would by himself with 
no assistance. And on at least one occasion, he had he had someone hiking with him. And between the two of them, they were able to get the dog up to those areas. So we've now come out to 441, and what we're going to do is hike up where we came down and get back on the, the trail and head back to the car. So we'll catch you back there. Well, now here's something you don't see every day, but it proves I'm in Lancaster County. There's the horse. And there's the buggy. And what's that sign say? It's a punk thing, you wouldn't understand. Don't even try. I wonder if he locked his keys in there. Ha uh ha. -huh. Well, the sun is going down. Another training hike in the books. Did about six and a half miles, which isn't a long day, but it's a good workout because in the park I get to do about 700 feet up and down. And there's always great views. So now it's time to head on back to the shop and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that umbrella to my pack. Well, down in the shop, I couldn't find any spring metal, and I couldn't find any at the local hardware store. But what I do have is some closed cell foam that I use for uh, pads for white water purposes. So what I've done is I've attached this to my piece of Velcro uh, with some dental floss. And I've added uh, just a thin piece of aluminum flashing. To help give that pad some rigidity now we're going to attach that to the top of the pack so the way i figured out how to attach the umbrella is i take the loop put the chest strap through the loop this clips into there and I have this extra little bungee strap which goes on the handle and there it is I'm dry hands free good to go so your packs gonna vary from mine uh, but you'll figure out something else that works for you that's what's working for me today see you on the trail <music>